Hey everyone, this is Chris, sometimes known as LOTR Deck Tech, and I am bringing you a really stupid deck this week. Uh, we just got a bunch of news about the second adventure pack in the next cycle, and it has a hero in it that focuses on attachments that go on location. So we've been having this big discussion about like what all those attachments are, which ones are worth including on the Discord channel. And yeah, I'm going to play with some of those because that's the sort of theme of the deck we're going for this week. But I really want to start with one of everyone's favorite corset nonsense cards. It's bad, but I think it's not as bad as everyone thinks. And the deck is named after this card, so you may or may not have figured this out by now. The card I'm talking about is Power in the Earth. Uh, it costs you one spirit resource that attaches to a location, and all it does is reduce the threat of that location by one. So ideally we're going to drop this on a location and never, ever travel there. Seriously, literally never. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, the other ones that we've got in the deck that are way better, uh, we have Ancient Mathem, which lets us draw cards when we explore a location. We have Ranger Provision, which generates resources when we explore a location, which is very handy. Uh, and we have Elf Stone, which allows us to play allies for free when we explore a location. Uh, of all of those, that one is sort of the most restrictive because it has a hugely powerful effect, but that's okay. Uh, baked into the deck, we also have a few ways of getting attachments back, because as you may have noticed, all those attachments I just talked about are temporary. So we have two copies of Airmore Hammersmith, which allows us to pull the top attachment card from our discard pile back into our hand. Uh, so we have to be careful a little bit about which attachments go to the discard pile when. Uh, we have Galadrum Weaver, which will just shuffle the top card back into the deck no matter what it is. Uh, we're probably going to be using this for card draw attachments. Uh, shuffling an Ancient Mathem back in is potentially a ton of extra draw in the deck. And we have, what was the last one? Oh yes, my <laughs> Hobbit favorite that I basically never use, Second Breakfast. Uh, it is Airborne Hammersmith, except instead of being attached to a very solid dwarf ally, it is a leadership, a leadership event. And you may be wondering what heroes we're going with. As you have noticed, this is a three-sphere deck, of course. Uh, I decided to take a little break from some of my usual standards, so we are going very low threat and high willpower, comparatively speaking. So we're going to start off with Spirit Gorfindel, everyone's favorite OP hero that I think is honestly not that great. Um, he's cheap, he's three willpower, and he allows us to use Asphaloth. All fantastic things. We've got Sam Gamgee, gives us leadership access plus three willpower right off the bat. Our threat is also pretty low, so there's a good chance we'll be able to trigger his ability and use him to attack. And we're going to round it off with Falco Boffin, who I know I have not used very much on the channel, but who I kind of absolutely love. Uh, he comes in in this deck at five threat. We are probably not ever going to discard him, but he's got two willpower, he's got two attack. He's Glorfindel Light. <laughs> and I think that's really all the cards that you need to hear about right now in order to get a decent feel for what the deck is trying to do and where the deck is going to go. I mean, you know, there's like 20 allies and I haven't talked about any of them, but you'll see those. So, let's get into the game. Alright, here we are in Octagon. I've got my deck all set up. Here is in a row. We are going up against the Drowned Ruins. This is a quest that has a lot of locations. You are, in fact, pretty much guaranteed to always have access to them. And as we go through the quest, more and more locations are going to come out. So maybe the power in the earth will actually get a chance to shine. And I've got my opening hand down here, and it actually looks pretty good. Uh, Octagon also got smart at some point and set my threat correctly with Falco Boffin. I assume that was a Rings DB update, so thanks for that. 
Uh, so let's get started. Ooh, right off the bat, there's an ancient Mathem, which I am looking for. An Undersea Grotto is great here because it allows me to dump an ally into play for cheap uh, when I travel to one. So first things first, I don't have any leadership cards, so let's put Resourceful on Falco Boffin. Uh, we have a bunch of lore cards that we're going to want to play, so do that first. Uh, let me... Actually, let's not do that first. Let's Darren's Runes right away. Because I was looking for that Light of Valinor. Uh, and I'm going to discard Ranger of Cardamon. It's expensive, we're not going to get there right away. And I want to play Power in the Earth. <laughs> Otherwise, what's the point of this deck being what it is? So, we'll get Light of Valinor on Glorfindel. Uh, Ancient Mathem and Power in the Earth can wait until next round. And we're going to quest. Uh, there's four up against us in the staging area, so when I send, what, five, eight to the quest, there's a good chance we'll make a little bit of progress. Reveal. Tangling and grasping is fine. Uh, Falco Boffin is going to be removed from the quest, so we only end up with six willpower. Still makes two progress, and I can travel to Undersea Grotto. Uh, let's see, do I want to pump up Captain Sahir? I mean, I've played this quest before. You've probably played this quest before. I don't want to invest too many resources in him. Uh, so let's just leave him for now. Moving on to the next round, we get Airborne Hammersmith and one extra on Falco Boffin. Um, yeah, I get a 1-2 for an Asphaloth, just in case. I'm going to spend one for an Ancient Mathem on the Grotto. Uh, and I will be able to Hammersmith. That's kind of irrelevant. Uh, let's spend this resource to give Nasia one. She's going to be a great help for defending and attacking. Might as well get that started now. And let's quest. Uh, once again, I am going to send eight against two in the staging area. I shuffled this deck. So, that is six up against two in the staging area. It means I make four progress. One, two, three, four. Undersea Grotto gets shuffled back into this deck. And we reveal a replacement. Cursed Caverns. That's a fun one. Uh, and Ancient Mathems triggers and draws me three cards. One, two. Come on, Octagon. Two, three. Yeah, life is good. Uh, Cursed Caverns or Undersea Grotto. Uh, let me travel to Undersea Grotto again. Leave Cursed Caverns here. Cursed Cavern seems like a great location to put Power in the Earth on. And let's move on to the next round. So we did just hit 20 threat. So I can still play this Resourceful for one resource. Throw that on Glorfindel. Uh, we don't really need the extra spirit resources right now, but the deck is about 50-50 lore and spirit. I will play Power in the Earth on Cursed Caverns, so it is only a two-thread location. Hmm, and I can play an ally for one less, so let's do that. Here is a Warden... Uh, no. We're going to do Erebor Hammersmith and shuffle this Ancient Mathem back. Sorry, I, that's the one that makes it go back into my hand. So we'll, we'll pop that soon enough can play a warden, but I don't think that's worth it. So I'm going to put Elfstone on Undersea Grotto. And now I need to quest enough to make four progress. Shouldn't be tough. Uh, two, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, we're just going to send eight again up against two in the staging area. We reveal a drowned dead. All right, so up against four. My eight is four progress. One, two, three, four. 
just enough to clear out Undersea Grotto. So let's take this, shuffle it back into the deck, and reveal a replacement. Second Cursed Caverns. Elfstone Triggers, which allows me to put Furial into play for free. Hmm. Uh, and I guess I will travel to a Cursed Cavern, because I don't want two of them in the staging area. And Drowned Dead. I can defend the Drowned Dead. Um, yeah, but I can kill the Drowned Dead. So, let's engage the Drowned Dead. I'm just going to ready Sam. He is now two attack and two defense. I get a shadow card. Nasia is going to defend. And her ability is an action, so I can wait until after I flip this shadow card. That shadow does nothing right now. So Nasia would take two damage. Uh, I will spend a resource to avoid that damage. And now we can fight back. So, three, four, five, six, and I have seven if I need it, is enough to kill the drowned dead. Uh, I haven't really been using Asphaloth, so let's Asphaloth to put two progress on this Cursed Caverns. And we're moving on to the next round, finally out of secrecy. Alright, here we go. Second breakfast gets me an Elfstone back. Which I don't have much to do with, but I will still play Ancient Mathem and an Elfstone. Uh, this allows me to draw three cards before I would put an ally into play, so there's a good chance we'll find something useful. And let's quest. Oh, I should have one extra resource here and one extra resource here. Uh, I'm going to save Warden of Healing. Uh, worst case, I put the Warden of Healing into play with the Elfstone. So, two, five, six, seven, eight committed to the quest, but I'm going to make it 11 right now because Furial has a really useful ability. Sea Scorpion is totally fine. So, up against four, I will make seven progress. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, Cursed Caverns comes back here. Uh, I'm not going to trigger the ability that allows me to draw the bottom card of my deck. Alright, so let's discard Ancient Mathem to draw three cards. One, two, three. Okay, and we discard Elfstone to play... Put an ally into play for free. Great. So Guardian of Rivendell does not cause us to discard any cards. He just shows up and says, yo. Um, and I will travel to Undersea Grotto, because Undersea Grotto is pretty great. I don't want to flip it underwater yet. I will engage the Sea Scorpion. Might as well put one of these on the Sea so that I can defend against the Sea Scorpion. Uh, that is a shadow that does nothing, so I don't even have to spend that resource. Uh, Sam is ready after the Sea Scorpion, so three, four, five, six, yet again. Kills the Sea Scorpion. I have Guardian of Rivendell, so we're in even better shape now. And we're moving on to the next round. Well, okay, what I really need more than anything else at this moment is to draw cards. Uh, but I will spend one of these resources to put one on Nasia. And we'll spend one, play a Warden of Healing, now that Undersea Grotto is our active location. I mean, I could just pay four for Resourceful, because we don't have anything right now. Yeah, or I can Elrond's Council and we'll be fine. Uh, so let's quest. Two, five, eight, eleven, yet again. We reveal with the option to discard Throngs of Unfaithful. So I will absolutely discard that and reveal instead Curse of the Downfallen. So that is one damage on the Erebor Hammersmith and a dead Warden of Healing. Which goes to the bottom of my deck, which is not great, but I will live with it. 
Uh, and up against two threat, we are going to make nine progress. So I'm going to play Elrond's Council, making it 10 progress and dropping my threat down to 19. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This goes back into the deck and we pull out a Cursed Caverns yet again. Yep, I'm feeling okay with this right now. <sighs> we travel to this Cursed Caverns, and we move on to the next round. All right, we are at 20 threat, so I can play the Resourceful for cheap, uh, which is going to be on Falco. And one, two, three, four plays a Ranger of Cardolan, just a sort of generally useful ally. Can't play either Asphaloth, so we are going to put a resource on Naasia. Whose name I've said like three different ways now, so you're just gonna have to deal with that. Alright, we quest yet again. Two, five, eight, eleven. Committed to the quest. Up against two in the staging area. We are once again going to discard that with Furial and reveal instead. Tangling and grasping. It's totally fine. We can remove Falco Boffin. So, up against two, I make seven progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, you know, I will raise my threat by two to draw the bottom card of my deck. Let's see if there's an easy way to do this. Nope, okay. Oh wait, there we go. Look at bottom one card. Warden of Healing. Up to 22 threat yet again. So dump this back in here, shuffle it, and pull out. Oh, Waterlogged Halls. We haven't seen this one yet. I don't remember at all what's on the <laughs> underneath of any of these locations. So we're just gonna run with it. Um, I should put one of these on Sahir. We're going to need the willpower soon enough. As you can see, we've got our 15 progress. We just have to clear some underwater locations. So let's uh, travel to waterlogged halls and move on to the next round. Ooh, hey, it's power in the earth again. So one extra resource here, two extra resources there. And one power in the earth. It's down to one threat in the staging area. Put one of these on Sahir and one of these on Naasia. Hmm. Uh, and I guess I will one, two, Warden of Healing. Being able to heal is pretty handy. Uh, so let's quest two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Up against one. I did not remember there were any of these in the encounter deck. Just to be sure. Yep, it's not a grotto on the other side. Uh, all right, up against four means I make seven progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's shuffle this one back in. Draw a replacement. It is waterlogged halls yet again. Uh, do I want to travel to Drowned Cave? I think I do. So, uh, actually, no, I totally don't. Why would I do that? Uh, we'll just use Asphaloth with two progress on Drowned Cave. Uh, and I'm going to travel to the waterlogged halls. And I'm going to flip it underwater side up. So what do we get? Sunken Temple. Attachments are blank. That kind of sucks. Um, yeah, okay. It's fine though. We will be absolutely fine. Uh, Drowned Cave is not a huge deal. And I'll be able to pop it as soon as we clear the Sunken Temple. So, let's move on. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's heal my Erebor Hammersmith. And then we'll move on to the next round. Uh, I don't want to play Ancient Mathem right now because that does nothing to help me. I don't get my extra resources. Still put one on Sahir and one on Nasia. 
Okay, up against four in the staging area, we need to quest pretty hard. Although, the bad effect for failing to explore this one is actually not that bad. I have extra resources here, so no big deal. Uh, but we will quest. Two, five, six, seven, eight, raising my threat by one, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Uh, let's make it 18 for good measure. Uh, and because it matters, possibly, I will put the extra Elrond's Council Willpower Boost onto Furial. So, 18 up against 4 in the staging area. We reveal a Cave Eel. It's actually absolutely completely fine. So, 7 total threat means I make 11 progress just enough to clear the sunken temple, send it to the victory display, revealing a replacement under Sea Grotto. Hmm. So I want to travel to the Drowned Cave so that I can kill this cave eel. I would have to spend three resources off of Nasia. Uh, nah, let's do that next round. I'm going to travel to Undersea Grotto, which means I cannot engage this cave eel. Um, let's leave the Asphaloth for now, because I can pop Ancient Mathem during planning. And I'm just going to move on to the next round. I get my extra resources this time, one, two, and one. I will spend one to put Ancient Mathem on this drowned cave. Use Asphalaf to put two progress on it, which clears it out, triggers the Ancient Mathem, draws me three cards. Darren's runes, draw two cards and discard an extra Asphalaf. Uh, I easily have one for Elfstone on the active location and one for Ranger Provisions on the active location. And one to put a quick beam in play with a resource on him. Uh, and we're going to save this Warden of Healing in case we get that treachery again. I forget whether I played any allies the round that we were underwater, but I don't think I did. So let's quest. Uh, we don't even have to do it all that hard right now. I should be at one in the victory display. Uh, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Committed to the quest up against four. And we're going to discard that and reveal instead Powerful Undertow. Cannot flip the active location this round. If the active location is underwater, resolve its forced. Instead, we get Doomed Three. That does not bother me in the slightest. Uh, I make seven progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Undersea Grotto comes in here. Shuffle comes back out as a cursed caverns. Uh, Ranger provisions. Uh, let's do this way. Elfstone triggers, puts Treebeard into play. Exhausted. Uh, and Ranger provisions will trigger and do one, two, three resources. Which I don't need, by the way, but that is fine. I will travel to Cursed Caverns, because I really don't have much of a choice. And we're going to move on to the next one. Spend one for second breakfast to get my Ranger Provisions back. Uh, Treebeard has an extra resource, Gorfindel has one, and Falco Buffin has two. Spend one for Ranger Provisions. Uh, might as well shift a resource to each of my objective allies. And we're going to quest 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, sure, why not? Let's make it 15. So here needs to be useful for something. Reveal, powerful undertow. Uh, I don't want that, so let's instead get 
tangling and grasping. Sure. Removes Sahir from the quest. He's down down to 11 willpower. Up against, once again, 4. Means I will make 7 progress. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Triggers Ranger Provisions. 1, 2, 3. I don't want to trigger that Doomed Effect. Shuffle. Pull back out. Undersea Grotto. Uh, I will travel to the Undersea Grotto and flip it. That's not what I meant to do. Flip it to its underwater side. Cannot attack. That's actually probably fine. Except it means we won't be able to clear out the Cave Eel uh, this round. But I am forced to engage the Cave Eel. Comes in, gets a shadow effect. Defend with Nasia. Who spends one resource to avoid... I don't even want to bother. She takes a point of damage, and I can immediately heal Quick Beam and her. And I can't attack, so Caveal is currently stuck. We're moving on. Light of Alinor, you are useless. One, two, one, one extra resources. I'll load them up on the objective allies. Dark Abyss. This should be fine. 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 13, 16, uh, 17, 18, 19, 2021. Pretty sure we're going to make it up against one threat in the staging area, especially since we get Rite of Refusal. Thanks to Furial. Nope, I'm going to keep Ancient Deaths. That is absolutely fine. We add one of these to the staging area. And we flip it face up. And we get instead Twisting Hollow. So, up against 5. My 21 willpower is 16 progress. A dark Abyss goes to the victory display. I get a resource, and we reveal another grotto. Waterlogged halls. So I can travel to Twisting Hollow. Um, do I need to defend with the Guardian and kill back pretty easily? Yeah, all right, let's travel to Twisting Hollow. <sighs> Which means Caviel stays engaged with me, gets a shadow effect. Uh, I have three, six. It's exactly what I need, so let's defend with Naasia. Tagging me gets plus two, so I will spend a resource to basically cancel that shadow effect. And three, four, five, six is more than enough to kill the Caviel. Allows us to move on to the next round, where I cannot ready cards from card effects or play any attachment or allies. Well, getting Jubair in play next round is real good. Uh, let me put a resource on Nasia, and we'll put one on Sahir. We've got plenty to go around. Uh, and we're just going to quest. Two, five, six, seven, eight, fourteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 14, 17, 18, 19, uh, do, 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 20, 21. Yeah, let's do that. 21. Uh, and I can be using Asphaloth more or less whenever I feel like, but we don't need it, so I'm not too worried. We reveal... A uh, powerful undertow. What is this going to do? Discard a character? That's really not bad. Yeah, alright. So, we're going to discard a character. I'm going to discard Warden of Healing. My 21 up against 3 in the staging area is 18 progress. Once again, 14. And then 4 more on the grotto. That goes to the victory display. 
And I don't remember whether this happens immediately, but I think we do get another grotto location before we advance the quest. But honestly, who knows the timing of these things anymore. So moving on to stage two. Shrine to Morgoth is now the active location. Captain Sahir flips, becomes an enemy, removes all of these resources that we so carefully built up, attempts to punch me in the face, uh, and then he moves on. So, let's see, what does this force us to do? Cannot have attachments, that is fine. It's not immune to player card effects, so that's a plus. Means I can just do one, two right now. Uh, so here's gonna hit for six. So I'll defend with Nasia and spend two tokens to avoid that damage. And Captain Sahir runs away. I do have to grab an undead enemy. So let's look at all the cards that are left. Any undead in here is a drowned dead. That's really my only option. All right. Ground dead it is. So we're pretty enemy heavy. Into the Abyss isn't gonna hurt us very much. And Ancient Depths is really not gonna hurt us at all. So the encounter deck is pretty safe right now. Uh, it is very shadow heavy. Uh, but we're not underwater yet, so I'm not too worried. Yep, okay, so. Drown dead, I'm going to engage, which readies Sam. Uh, we will defend against the drowned dead with Treebeard. Okay, that's one of the non-shadow effect ones. Who's going to take one damage from this? And I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why not? More than enough to kill the drowned dead. Can't heal Treebeard yet, but next round. Uh, and we're gonna move on. Beginning of the quest phase, we flip, so that is fine. Uh, one, two, one, one. Might as well slide one of these over. And one, two, three, four, five. That is Jubair. So now we are super safe from uh, enemies that are going to engage us. Might as well, one, two, play a Warden of Healing, trigger him immediately because I don't think I'm going to need him otherwise. Uh, and before questing, since I don't remember if this becomes immune to player card effects, we're going to ask Philoth to put two progress on the Shrine to Morgoth. So, moving to questing, where we are forced to dive underwater. And we're going to quest. Oh, I forgot. Uh, no, yep, because we weren't underwater yet. We could still play that ally and this ally. So let's just quest. Uh, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It's not quite as much as we could muster while Sahir was in play, but we have a bunch of combat sort of sitting back. Um, I can absolutely ready Ents with Treebeard. We're only up against five in the staging area. So let's see what we reveal. Sea Scorpion is... I don't remember what else is in here. Uh, we can maybe do better than Sea Scorpion. Ground Dead is not really better, but still fine. So up against seven, I make 11 progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Almost good enough. will optionally engage the Drowned Dead, which readies Sam. Defend against the Drowned Dead with Jubair, because I can discard the Shadow Effect, because that one is annoying. I think that's the card I was basically hoping to draw, because it, like, it wouldn't affect my hand at all, and even if I discarded all these cards, it doesn't matter. So, uh, we defended, he takes one point of one point of damage. Uh, and we, sorry, I forgot to raise my threat by five because we didn't clear. So Sam is not ready, but that's fine. 
I only need six to hit back, so here's three, four, five, six, seven. Ground dead goes away. I'm move on to the next round. Uh, and I can't play allies or attachments because we are underwater. So let's just make this way overkill. Two progress on with Asphalaf. So close. Uh, and we're gonna quest. Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, yet again. And we reveal a sea scorpion, which I don't want, so we get instead Ancient Depths. That one is possibly worse. Uh, but I really don't care, because we only need to make one progress. So, lots of locations in the staging area. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Up against my 18 means I make nine progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Which is more than enough to clear the shrine to Morgoth. And that is the Drowned Ruins. Uh, <laughs> a very location heavy deck for a very location attachment heavy. I got those totally backwards. So let's try it one more time. It is a very location heavy quest for a very location attachment heavy deck. And hey, we got two power in the earth, and they basically contributed two willpower for a whole bunch of turns. The card is still bad. It's just not... It's not useless. It's just bad. Alright everyone, that is going to be it for me this week. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.